All right. What's up, everybody? March 4th, I will be in Detroit at the Royal Oak Music Theater. March 5th, Gramercy Theater, New York City, special taping, two shows. Be there. We're doing the Speci Weshi. March 11th, co headlining with Sal Volcano in Nashville, Tennessee. March 18th, Seattle, Washington. March 19th, Portland, Oregon. March 25th, Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. April 8th, Indianapolis. April 9th, Denver, Colorado. And April 29th, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where Jesus Christ was born. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. We're going to go wild today. Um, the Ukraine and Russia are in war. Um, this is coming out three... Uh, th today's Thursday, so this will come out Tuesday. So the planet could be lost by now. Uh, I don't know. It's possible. It could happen. Who cares? You know? I just know if we get nuked, I'll probably be evaporated while I'm masturbating. So, Vanity is walking in, and we have a guest, one of Homeless Pimp's friends. Homeless Pimp, he, this guy, what, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Shim Vega. Jim Vega? Shim, Shim. Shim, your name's Shim Shima. Yeah. <laughs> Shim Vega, everybody. What kind of name is Shim? Well, it's short for Shim Shon. Apparently, I'm named after some biblical hero. Shim and, Shon uh, Vega. Yeah. So, the last name Vega is Spanish. Yes. Muy bien. Muy bien. C. <laughs> um, you're in a Spanish household. I have to, all the people that you've walked past are Puerto Ricans. Okay. Yes. Right. I have Puerto Rican family. I have a Puerto Rican coop in there. Yeah. Yes. There's a Puerto Rican farm. And, uh, and um, we're, we're, we're just, yes, we're just, you know, we're growing Puerto Ricans. And it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's the first of its kind on this block. I was okay. told by the neighbors because they came with their guns when we moved in. <laughs> um, so, and then Shim, what's the, what's the first name? Shimshon. Shimshon. Now, is Shimshon Chinese? No, I, I do speak Mandarin, but it's not. You um, speak Mandarin? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Can you rip a little something in Mandarin for us? <laughs> wow, yeah, dude, that's amazing. amazing, dude. You're like Des Bishop. Do you know who Des Bishop is? <laughs> not at all. He's this comedian that he uh, he goes on at the end of every show, and he just raps in, in Chinese, and the crowd <laughs> goes wild. nuts to like, oh, my God, it's amazing, but comics hate it probably picked the wrong career path no 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 um but <laughs> so so that's amazing dude you speak mandarin now why did you learn to speak mandarin that was my foreign language in high school okay um, i'm already you know my my dad was puerto rican so spanish right. was a big thing in my family you said was is he no longer with us no nah, he's not he passed how did he die was like eight uh lung cancer oh okay smoker though, i was gonna so say so he died of like a yeah okay like a lung cancer is like a thing you know hey it happens, it happens. you know what i mean yeah it's like uh, we have a friend of the show whose his, his father had AIDS and then he got shot. So his father got shot to death with AIDS. It's That's like, dude, God, you're dead. on the wound. Yeah, like. you're dead, dude. Just like, I would have been like, buddy, can you just give me a week? Right. My T cells are almost at zero. You don't have to shoot me in the head. Um, so Shimishon Vega. So, so, he, so. He was actually in the Israeli forces. Yeah. Uh, he Whoa. Spent two years in the IDF. <laughs> In the Israeli oh. forces, Shimshon Vega, this is what the Israeli soldiers look like. So if you're watching Russia and you want to invade Israel, that's what you're going to have to fight. So don't fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to deal with Shimshon Vega. <laughs> They'll meet all my friends, too. That's oh, my God. So you grew up in Israel? No, I grew up here. I'm from New York. Um, I was born in Atlantic City, and I lived in New York City for like... We just did the Borgata on Saturday, life. two sold-out shows, Atlantic City. Hey. Thanks. Trump oh. cleaned it up, and then you voted him out, and now it's shit again. <laughs> Um, so you were born in Atlantic City. How did you wind up in the Israeli military? Uh, so I'm Jewish. My mother's Jewish. Um, and every Jew kind of has this thing called uh, the right to return, right? So Israel is looked at as like the Jewish you know, homeland. And uh, if right. you want to move back there, you can. The thing is, once you do that, Israeli law applies to you and they draft in their military. Oh, shit. So it's like, you know, a couple weeks in, you get a letter like, hey, show up at this office so we can evaluate you for service. So I'm like, okay. Right. Um so I did that. My best friend, like, from here had moved, like, a year before I did, and he had already been in the Army for, like, a year. So, like, I knew what to expect, but I didn't because I right. barely spoke Hebrew. Right. And they teach you that in basic training. So it's like it's like college with guns, paychecks, and so much stress. It's like. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that's amazing that you got drafted to the Israeli military. Now, let me ask you. It's a, it's a question for today. Okay. Because it seems like we could potentially be on the brink of World War III yeah. if – there's a draft, let's say, in the United States. Will these soldiers have to be vaccinated? <sighs> I, and when they're doing their marching orders, should they 
be six feet apart because the only positive <laughs> news I've seen out of the Ukraine, truthfully, uh -huh. is the Russian tanks going in there. And the only positive thing I can say is all the Russian soldiers I saw are wearing masks. Yeah, well, so at least they're keeping the country safe <laughs> while they're killing their citizens. It, well, you know, war by default, I think, is pretty socially distanced. Yes, that's so true. It's, it's a good point. It's, it's, that's, the, yeah. that's the positive <laughs> about that's the So that's right. We're in a COVID. COVID hit at the right time because if COVID was happening during like Braveheart's time, Everybody, yeah. forget about a sword. Yeah. No you're going to get war. a fever. Exactly. And you're dead. Yeah. So now, now it's, you're right. At least we have socially distanced warfare. Yeah. Yeah. And at least I, I'm sure that if things get really bad in uh in Russia, Ukraine situation, we'll send over Dr. Fauci and he'll be able to make a vaccine to <laughs> heal, heal everybody. Yeah. Um, um, but- that's so interesting, man. So you got, were you scared when you got like in the U Isra Is Israeli um, military? I mean, yeah, it really wasn't my first radio. After high school, I joined the National Guard here in New York for two years. Uh -huh. So I was right on 24th in Lexington with the 69th. Right. Um, we didn't participate in any active conflicts. It turns out the United States was not into bombing people that decade. So yeah. It's, Whoa. You know, it was pretty chill. Yeah. Um, I went to art school, so, you know, no money. So that's why I did that. <laughs> um, after that, I tried art again, still no money. So then that's why I moved to Israel. Right. Um, you know, people run away to Mexico. That's my Mexico, I guess. You went to Israel. Yeah. Um, but as far as the fear, I mean... I guess the mindset's a little different here in the U.S. You think of, like, yeah. being in the Army, going to war, you're going to be, like, 9,000 miles away for, like, a year. No, in Israel, it's, like, right in your backyard. Like, right. we have freaking air raid sirens. Like, where I live on Long Island, that means, you know, the fire department's getting called up. Sure. In Israel, that means find a freaking bunker. We have miklachat, which are, like, little bunkers under every apartment building yeah. in the house. And it's, like, everyone just flocks there in their flip-flops. It's pretty crazy. Everyone know? just chills. So, like, that's where yeah. people... So, like, how, like, Pimp was editing, how he learned to edit in his basement, he would learn to edit in, in the bunker, in the nuclear bunker in Israel. <laughs> yeah, pretty is much. where he's learning his skills. Yeah. Um, so, because, you know, it's interesting to talk to a guy like you that, because you got to learn if the Israeli military, you must know Krav Maga. Yeah. Well, which is a crazy... <laughs> It's a crazy form of martial arts because isn't it just like, it's hey, we're street not, fighting. Yeah, it's just yeah. literally I'm going for your eyes and, and your genitals. That's pretty yeah, much what it and is. Your right? throat. Anything and your, that hurts causes as much pain as fast as possible. And, you know, if you rip at something enough, you'll probably kill the guy. Yeah. So. Yeah, because because Krav, because Israel is pretty much a country right in the Middle East where everyone around them is yeah, their everyone enemy. Everyone hates us. So they're like, we have yep. to just, where there's no like, hey, I'm yep. going to do a martial arts so we can get points yeah. from the judge. It's like, no, no, no. Our martial arts is to literally kill you with my bare hands. Yeah. And and that's usually the only way out because yeah. you got captured, you're going to die. That That's one thing that they do teach you going in like... The IDF has, you know, Christians, Muslims, Jews, but it's predominantly Jewish, right? So we're, we're kind of raised with the notion that, like, that region really just hates us and wants to exterminate the country. Right. So it's like, you're like, yeah, capture, just shoot yourself or try and get shot because right. it's not going to be fun after. It's like, not going to be fun. Yeah. So, how, so, so how did you go from, from the Israeli military? We're, by the way, we're here uh, with the one and only Shimisho and Vega. So how did, you, yeah. how did you go from the Israeli military into jewel, in jewelry, right? You work, you're, you're from, well, did you see the movie Uncut Gems? Hell Uncut yeah. Gems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Definitely, were you in it? Were you in Uncut Jobs? Hell no, and I definitely am glad I didn't end up like the guy or his brother, I think it was. Um, oh, no, yeah. I moved back to Israel, and, you know, I was kind of trying to find a job that fit my work experience, which there's not really much. Um, it's like, <laughs> You're like, you know, I'm a stoner Israeli street fighter that yeah, knows Krav like, Maga. You know, so, like, what's you, up, dude? You got a bus on one ball, guy, but, like, you know, you want me to file paperwork, that's not really going to happen, so... Uh, I had this friend, another Israeli guy. He's actually Russian Israeli, which is kind of ironic. Wow, is he over there um, right now? No, he's here. He's in okay. Brooklyn, not giving a single shit about. He doesn't what's care going at all, on. right? No, he got his golden ticket. <laughs> he's um, all, he's all but uh, I hit him up, and his, his dad died last year of COVID, and his dad was uh. like this. Yeah, shit happens. His dad was like this master jeweler. Right. And so, you know, left him the company. He's like, well, I'm all by myself. And I here, hold the off. mic up to you. you oh, all better. Yeah. Hell so yeah, dude. he's like, you know, I'm doing this by myself instead of like just jerking off in my bedroom. I need some help. I was right. like, all right. Didn't have much jewelry experience. You I was only jerk artist. off in the bedroom. No. Got to go no. all around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. There's some lines that deserve to yeah. be blurred. Yeah. Um, where, where do you like to go, Chris? Oh. Where do I, where's the, where would I say jerk off the most? I like to sit in the sink. Yeah. I like to just sit in the sink like a rubber ducky. <laughs> Easy cleanup, I yeah. guess. Like yeah. a giant baby right. jerking yeah. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I like to, I, I would say, I would say, uh, yeah, nine times out of 10, um, nine times out of 10, I would say I'm 
banking it uh, <laughs> in uh, in the basement before, but now they're doing oh, basement okay. floors. I am actually want my construction workers are doing work in my house. I need them to move forward quickly with the basement floors because that's my little hub of- Need your privacy. Yeah, dude. I like to, to jerk get off. On that registry, right? By doing yeah. it in front of the wrong people. I like to just rub my <laughs> nutsack on the dryer. Um so okay yeah so 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 you're you're the jeweler that you know that guy uh-huh. dies of covid and then you say yeah. there's an open position yeah so you know he's like yeah it's just me and this company you want to come in you know we'll split things down a middle. i'm like all right great he's Hell like yeah. but that'll take some time I'm like all right whatever you're gonna have to teach me everything you know because i know art but not jewelry so right over the course of like a year i apprenticed for him and it was just like a crash course in miami cuba link chains and all that crap that like rappers buy and shit like that so I got really good at it. And then I'm like, you know, it came to a point where I'm like, hey, you know, maybe you could start doing that 50 50 split we talked about. And it's yes. like, it always came out, we're going to open up an office in the Diamond District, and that's going to be half yours. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. As time goes on, I guess the guy gets more comfortable with me, and he just like starts asking me to do him favors. Like, I, you know, it goes from not regular, sexual. No, not non sexual. <laughs> I do not just consent. I want to make sure. Yeah. You do not um, consent. No. That's where we're about here. <laughs> but, you know, he'd have me like moving money. Into oh, wow. Nice. Accounts, nice little criminal into, enterprise. Yeah, into and out of <laughs> my go. accounts, you know, and it's like sitting here, you know, paying me what you're paying me. Yeah, you just had me put in 20 grand and then pull it out of another account right away. You're having me meet dudes in the subway to pick up like chains that they're selling. It's, it's, it's all weird. So would you have to travel in the subway with like gold bars? Yeah, I have. And then I started, <laughs> I, then I started driving. He's like, oh, don't drive, you know, to 47th Street where the Diamond District is. There's like no parking. I'm like, no, screw that. I'm not walking around 200 grand. With gold bars. Gold. I mean, who's yeah. walking around with gold bars? What are you, the queen of England? Yeah. <laughs> no. She also has COVID. That sucks. Isn't she like? I'm surprised she's still around. She's, no, I know. I thought she, I thought she, I thought she was one of those people. Like she died. Right? I thought Betty White and the Queen of England were the same well, person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, they picked the wrong one. They yeah, I know. I, know. I love. Shout out Betty White. Sure I want to get her on the pod. <laughs> oh man! But, but I got you instead. <laughs> Hey, hey. Because <laughs> Betty White died. It said it can only be filled by one person and one person only. Shimashona Vega. If I could step in Betty White's shoes, I think that's a compliment. Um, so 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 now you're running, so now you're you're moving money, you're walking around with gold yeah. bars. This is in the middle of COVID. You didn't know anything about jewelry yeah. before. You were an arts guy. You were an yeah. artsy fartsy. Yeah, pretty much. So then, so now when you're working at that jewelry store, and, and again, you never saw Uncut Jams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you have seen Uncut Jams. I have. Okay. Yeah. Because in Uncut Jams, it's like this whole <laughs> world of jewelry. Like, yeah. like there's a whole world of comedy, a whole you know, sub, you know, culture, culture that, yeah, that yeah, we yeah. know about. And is that subculture of Uncut Jams, yeah. is that real? 100%. Man, I've been to parties on rooftops on like looking Times Square from above. And like, it's a bunch of Bukharian Jews, like the Jews from Russia. Now, what, then, what uh, are those the uh, ones? What, if I, I, I what can, can you ex- Describe the type of Jewish person they are. The ones with the okay. hat. Do they have the, the jackets so, on? The curls? You know, you got the Hasidic Jews, right? The, the Ashkenazis from Europe. And then those are have, the hot ones, right? Those are the ones that, that have hot tempers. <laughs> no, and, aren't uh, the Ashkenazi ones the ones that they look almost like Puerto Rican? No, not at all. You're thinking of the Safari. Safari, like Safari Gadol, Jews. Right? right? Yeah, exactly. Wonder Woman. So, and then everyone Wonder else. Wonder Woman's a Sephardic. Exactly. Ashkenaz yeah. is, is uh, Germany, do you know who Ari Shafir is? Then. No. The comedian Ari Shafir. I think Ari Shafir is Ashkenazi. Good for Just him. Just a real ugly yeah. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So these are like, you know, the Jews. What kind of like, Jew, Jewish are you? I'm Sephardi. My, my, you're a, that's yeah. why you're a hottie with a body. P- pretty much. Dad bod, right? Dude, no, no, not that. But dude, you look, because I thought you were Latino at yeah. first, because you're Sephardi. Yeah. Dude, it's a party. It's a party. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, and we know how to use spices too. So oh, you that's do. There also you go. A thing. Yeah. So, 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 so the Jews, the type of Jewish people that were on the roof, or what, what type? Bukhari. 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 Yeah. So I from, woke from up from Russia, Bukhari. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys are like, you know, all former Soviet Union dudes. Are these all are real deal rough. motherfuckers. Like you yeah. do not, you will not, yeah. no, you should they, not they, fuck they with. They have them. gangs or there's yeah. Jewish mafias. I, yes. I don't know. I feel like people think that the Jews don't have a mafia. We do. We no, no. Um, 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 Bugsy Siegel. Yeah, there you go. You've yeah. seen Boardwalk Empire, right? Yes, sir. There you go. Muggsy Bugsy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we also don't like getting kidnapped. You know, we have a history with that. So. Yeah, you don't want to get kidnapped. It's it's. Uh, so 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 that so the, the Bukhari Jews, you're hanging out with them, and that's kind of scary, right? On a rooftop, because anytime you're on Russia, people, it's a little 
little scary. Yeah, right? You don't want to hang by an ankle yeah, over you don't want that. Square. So did you see anything in these parties? Like, was it just oh, yeah. massive amounts of, like, money and drugs being transferred or not that? Not so much drugs. A shit ton of weed, a little bit of blow. But other than that, it's, you know, it's not like people are doing meth and crack in a corner. No offense right. against anyone who does. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> offense. You. No. But, um, no, it was de- a lot of gold. Like, you know, this dude brought his friend a present. It was, like, a straight-up 10-carat, like, blue diamond. He's oh, like, yo, how man, much have is t- that. How much is a 10-carat blue diamond? <sighs> Like a couple hundred grand, like maybe three. Blue diamonds K. matter. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> now, can you tell us about like uh, the secret warehouses in Brooklyn that are doing gold? Yeah. Products? Yeah. So my first experience of that one day, my my boss. Tell uh, us about the gold. Yeah. He he's like, yo, I need you to go deliver something to Brooklyn, right? So something usually means money, gold, or stones. I'm not like, a All child right. sex slave. Never, that no, never counts that something. I, that, I <laughs> am above that. Is Ep- but, just uh, look into the camera and we ask every person, is Epstein innocent? Yes or that no? Camera, yeah, well, is Epstein right innocent? No. Okay. <laughs> Why? You're one, so now it's nine yeses to three no's. Yeah, right? <laughs> go, no, go ahead. Well, so... Yeah, he's, he gives me this address, and it, and it always comes from a random number, like, where I got to go. And I'm like, all right, yeah. I put the address in the GPS. I show up. It looks like this broken-down warehouse, like, all abandoned from the outside. I get in. It's like a state-of-the-art lobby with, like, fluorescent LED lighting. Oh. I think those are two different things. Oh, so my God. A, uh, nice elevator with, like, a thumbprint. He's like, yo, put this code in the elevator. I go in. Instead of By going the way, up, you may get a message from one of our friends of the show, Joe DeRosa, to open up a sandwich shop at that location. <laughs> yeah. Just Let's go. FYI. Let's go. <laughs> the gold bar foot long. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so instead of going up, because you know this is like a five floor warehouse, the elevator goes down like five floors. I was like, oh, I didn't think there was and like we would never know this was there. It's like no, it looks like a dilapidated no, yeah, piece exactly. of shit. Yeah, it looks condemned, you know, and they they got plywood everywhere and stuff like that, wow. covering windows and doors. So I get down to like the fifth floor. And Wait, I hold like the I mic s- closer, sorry. Yeah, I, I get down to like I guess the negative five floor, and it looks like a freaking like CDC lab. Like you see people wearing like Tyvek suits and stuff like that, and they're just smelting gold by like the the dozen pounds i don't know there's a unit of measurement for it but um so anyway i go and i i find out what i'm dropping off is a bag of gold grain which is how we transport her mostly it looks like rice but gold so oh, yeah wow. like you know maybe oh my god 1500 like, we grams. Would not know, like if you put a if you put if you put a bag of the gold of the gold grain here it looks just like rice no it looks just like gold in it the looks shape just like rice. gold in yeah. the shape of rice but that but still my puerto rican family would cook it with a little adobo you could probably <laughs> and then you, they lose, yeah. they, they, there'd be like a ten thousand dollar meal right yeah i mean that, that'd be the most expensive shit you ever took but <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, people eat gold it's safe um, uh nice gold diarrhea yeah i mean we used, we used to drink vodka with gold in it yeah. so it's like a thing um, you used to drink vodka with gold in it yeah yeah they, 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 there's like you know a company that does it has gold leaf in it you can consume gold it's safe so we'd go to parties and we you could consume that. gold any type of gold like if i could if i could swallow a gold bar whole i could i'm fine yeah you'd probably choke to death otherwise but i mean you'd be good <laughs> chemically like it won't mess you up yeah uh don't swallow a bar of anything Dude, there's a guy the in the ancient roman empire his name was crashes yeah you know they molten ki- gold yeah they most poured throat. molten gold down yeah. his throat he didn't survive but i guess because yeah. the, the heat yeah, I mean, you know, he died the way he lived, I guess. Yeah, but, it's true. You can, um, you can, pure gold, by the way, real quick, pure gold is chemically inert and passes through the human digestive system without being absorbed into the body. Since 24 karat gold is very soft and fragile, like me, most edible gold, <laughs> whether leaf flakes or dust, also contains a little bit of silver, which is also inert. Gold and silver leaf are also certified kosher. Get there the you go. Fuck out. I wow, never thought dude. <laughs> that's it. That's I'd cool like a so. gold knish, please. Yeah, I bet that's a thing. This is why. <laughs> Why the world hates us yeah like um, we don't hate it at this podcast though we don't that's good that's outside good. this anti-semitism yeah. is bad yes just think but, of this uh, as little israel <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have one of those in israel they built the entire country as a scale model and it's called see it all small really but, yeah no it's it's like a big tourist it's right stupid as fuck so are like, you afraid in this gold factory or is, oh does it no, feel i mean this is insane this no, gold, i want to go there like, <laughs> like, like i want to do a pod from there <laughs> Yeah, you ever seen like, you know, Breaking Bad, Walter White's like, I'm the guy that knocks? Like, no, I'm inside the industry. Like, I'm the guy that knocks on these doors. Oh, wow. All these people that are wearing these Tyvek suits, they're like these, you know, Paraguayans and shit working for like a dollar. Was it day. illegal like, actually where you were? Technically, probably, or probably yeah. was illegal. Places like this are monitored and controlled by the U.S. government, so that's the Department of Commerce. That's taxed at a different rate because it's a commodity. So, in other words, the so, government doesn't know about that. 
Oh, uh, well, they do now, I guess. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say the one thing we have a lot of, we have a lot of police that listen. Because yeah. uh, of some of the dude. wardrobe choices I've made on some of my Instagram posts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what so, the blur tool's for. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, 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 all right. I'll tell you what I'm doing, babe. I'm downloading Exodus on my mobile and desktop, des- desktop at Exodus.com. Because you know what Exodus is? You're hearing about crypto everywhere, right? From Tesla to Tom Brady, even Snoop Dogg's getting into the action. Snoop a loop. And if you're not part of it, you can easily start today. And the way you start is through Exodus. You want to are you listen, are you confused by crypto? I'm Chrissy Crypto, and it even confuses me. Exodus makes it easy for you to get started in minutes. It's an app that is so easy to use, even your grandma can use it. Your easy to use grandma. Are your friends and family maybe even your favorite music artists investing in crypto and you feel left out? Do you feel left out? Exodus is the place for you. I'm telling you, it's the one-stop shop for crypty whipty For crypto, you can do it over, oh, uh, uh, it, it, what you do is you exchange, stake, or store your crypto, whatever your goal is. Exodus will make it easier and beautiful to do it. Manage and exchange over 150 crypto assets straight from your phone or computer. Over 4 million people trust Exodus to manage their crypto. Join the movement away from traditional finance by downloading Exodus. Visit Exodus.com or search Exodus Wallet in your app store to get started. Policy Genius, baby. I used it. I like it. It's your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. You click the link in the description or you head to policygenius.com and you answer a few questions. And in minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Having life insurance through your job it may not be enough. So most people need up to 10 times more coverage to properly provide for their families. Uh, the team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply for the policy you choose. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. It doesn't sell the info to third parties. Since 2014, it's helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over $120 billion in coverage. So right now, you're going to get, uh, if you go to head to policygenius.com, you're going to get free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policy policygenius.com. Go there, get the life insurance, free quotes. You need it. You love it. Yes. That's insane. So when you were in there, you think like people had guns. Like this was like a, like if I went in there right now, unannounced, I might get hurt. Like I'm seeing I mean, something I'm supposed to see. You'll definitely get pulled aside and asked who you are and where you come from. And depending I'll on say I'm what your Shum answers Shum are. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, the, the guy I worked for in the factory, he kept a gun on him. Um, yeah, you have to. Yeah, like, you know, and, like, he, he even got to the point where he's like, you know, you can keep a gun on you. Like, you're good with those. I was like, yeah, but no, this is New York City. I'd like to not go to jail forever. By the way, like, you know, I'm, by the way, tomorrow, I, I didn't tell you this, Pim, tomorrow, me and Jasmine are going to a gun range oh, on Long That's Island. We're going great. to a gun Calverton. range, and we're going to buy, well, I, I don't know, some one of them. We're going to go... Uh, and we're gonna get a gun. We need a gun in the house. You do. Dope. Every one of my neighbors has a gun. They said I was like, we need a gun. Oh, before I became a jeweler, I used to be a gunsmith. So really, yeah, I did oh that. God. What are some tips on on me? Because I've never fired a gun. <laughs> Ever. What is, okay. I've never done. So what what should I do? How should I handle it? Where should I keep the gun? Should you keep okay. the pinky ring on? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I want to talk about my jewelry after that, this. But first, let's talk about my gun right there. Um. <laughs> Don't look down the barrel. That's for you. And don't point it at anyone. That's for everyone else. Okay. Yeah. But okay. if someone comes in my house, I oh, could point it at them. That's you when you what? want to point it. But the rules yeah. are insane in New York. Do you know if I, if you yeah. broke into my house, you have a duty to flee. Well, I have to flee. And yep. I shot and killed you because I said, there's a yep. goddamn grizzly bear yep. in here. Murder and charge. I, <laughs> yep. and, and my family can sue you. But no, yep. you'd sue me and I would go to jail for murder. Yeah. yeah. So, but, so I have to have somehow be able to prove through my vivid security cameras, mm -hmm. that I had no way out other uh -huh. than to shoot and kill you, yeah. which is wild because in other states, like in Arizona, if you even step on my property, I can yep. kill you. My castle. I used to live in Florida too, so it's the wow. same shit there. Damn, um, dude, that's crazy. So, yeah. but, but so what should I do? So, so then really to have the gun is just what's the reason? If I can't kill anybody with it, it's really just to scare <laughs> someone. Do I shoot it off into my ceiling? Because then I have to have the construction worker back here. <laughs> Nothing, and then I have less places to jerk off. Nothing changes <laughs> someone's mind more than hearing a 12 gauge shotgun rackets pump. Mm. That's what it is. So, yeah. So, you would just shoot it at the floor, something like that. Don't shoot it at all. If I'm coming into your house to break in and I hear a 12 gauge pump, I'm running right back out of your house. Got it. Not the right house find no. a house without a shotgun in it yeah that because that's yeah. what they'll eventually do is like you the, no but unless they're coming to assassinate you yeah. your average everyday 
Yeah, thief. They're trying to steal. They're not trying to catch a murder. Yeah, shot I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with a yeah. shot. I don't want to deal with Chrissy Chaos with a shot. Yeah, right. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's not Kurt Cobain here. No, <laughs> dude. Don't, Imagine don't how funny would this. that be? He the burber the burglar came in while I was attempting my first suicide. <laughs> I just had the gun in my mouth, and he was just sad and left. He's like, oh, all right. <laughs> like, bro, you, you got enough like, going on, man. Lord. Uh, probably means you got nothing to steal at that point. Yeah, but, I know. You know. Well, so so that's so crazy. So you're going because it's like you know I'm envisioning in my head. It's like it's like like a lab. You know, like like almost like in Men in Black when it's like. There's all like these yeah. aliens and all like we could be like there's all hipsters walking. What part of Brooklyn was it? <laughs> uh, I think it was like Williamsburg. So like, the Williamsburg yeah. area. There's all these hipsters up there, you know, like Coffee doing protests. And and yeah, COVID nineteen sites, and you know, and meanwhile down below they're just making gold. These just yeah. people are, and it's mostly Jewish industry. You're saying the making yeah. the gold. It, it's it's owned all by Jews, and it's run like you know the workers are like from South America. You know, cheap labor. It's like a farm, but with wow. metal. But they have to keep their um, mouths shut. I'd imagine, right? Like yeah, they things, do. They like do. they can't. They must be told and they're like wearing you nothing can't tell under anyone. their Tyvek suits. So yeah, that they're way naked. They have Wait, they're naked there. Yeah, yeah, you see, they're not wearing t-shirts under it. The suits they, step up to the neck. They have to be naked. I'm pretty sure they do. What's the reason for that? Is that just it's, a freaky deaky owner? Make sure you or? don't steal anything. Yeah, you know, got it. So, so many places naked. you can put gold after you're naked. I mean. Pretty sure you still try, but I was gonna say I would shove it right up my dick hole. <laughs> oh God! No, I, I, yeah. I would tie a piece of gold dust right to one of my warts. <laughs> well, gold dust is worth its weight in gold, so there you go. Oh, there you go. Um, I got heavy warts. Yeah, it was just a creepy, you know, location and stuff. But you're going there, like I said, as I guess the antagonist wow. in that video so, game. So they give Dude, you a, this is fascinating. Yeah. It's crazy, right? They give yeah. you a bag of gold, and then what do you have to do? What do you? Do, are yeah, you so I go in. So I'm giving away. It's like fifteen hundred grams, right? Here, one, and talking so one and a half kilos. I'm giving for what's example. The, what's the street? Pro, what's the value of that financially? Like forty five grand a kilo, oh, and it's the, a little baby like that. Yeah, you could put one and a half kilos and like take up the same space as like a half ounce of weed. Like wow, yeah. and forty five grand. Yeah. Oh in my In God. fact, weed is worth exactly you buy a ten Bitcoin. times less than a gram of gold. So, oh wow. Yeah. So, okay. So you're in there. So your job is to your job when yeah. you went to that factory was to what? Yeah. So I go. I speak to uh, you know one of the Jews in charge. We speak in Hebrew. So no one hears what we're talking. By the way, about. the way you say that one of the Jews in charge, I want to m let the record show he said that, not me. And he's Jewish. Yeah. He lived in Israel. He's in the Israeli army. So Sorry. when he because he really hit it. So one of the Jews in charge he really hit it. I did not say that. I was looking off, praying for peace in the Ukraine. It's all right. Uh, I, I got my K card. It's cool. But uh, so yeah, no, I'm going through. I'm meeting this guy. We're talking about uh, you know what I'm bringing. He's gonna put it, bring out a scale, weigh it, uh, and then he's gonna give me cash for it. And yeah. like you know, it's not even like hundred dollar bills. It's like you know small bills, like like stripper money, right? Like ones and fives and tens, like in these rubber banded bundles. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is drug money. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like you know someone bought gold with drugs. Yeah, and like you know that's going on. It's all yeah. triangle jewelry yeah. drugs and all that shit. Yeah, it's all hand, you know, hand, hand to yeah. hand. Oh, so you can um, hide money in, in, gold, in gold and jewelry. Yeah, you can, well, once you buy Well, that's why gold, I kept asking to put 20 grand here, take it out. He's, he's yeah. washing the money. Yeah, and the cool thing is, is because, you know, he has a legal high cash flow business, you could just do stuff like that. No one bats an eye. People yeah. are like, it's gold. Of course, it's going to be high yeah. amounts frequently. Um, you know, and then sometimes I'd go to that same warehouse, pick up like made jewelry from like our counterparts and go right to like 47th Street and just, you know, sell it to a buyer. Um, we made a rope chain for Jay-Z once. Wow. From that um, gold factory. It, c it came from there. Yeah, so that's someone else's factory. We had our own factory. We didn't work in a store. We worked in a factory in Queen City. Right. It's like, um, but, you know, we, we would have these high net worth clients. One of them, you know, was Jay-Z. We, we did his work. We went down to the Diamond District. We met him. He's such a complete dick. But it's Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, what we, did he do? He's very anti-Semitic. We walked in. Not No, no, no. He, he never met us before. He puts in the order, whatever, or, or manager. He never met us he walks in he sees us walk in with our you know our keepers our yarmulkes and stuff he's like oh of course you guys are making my jewelry i was like oh jeez yeah i was like but he said that like friendly trying to joke around or no even? not even like just give me my jewelry take this money and leave me alone i'm like bro wow you know like wow all right. It's not like we're rolling in like the NYPD. You don't got to hate us. Like, yeah. we have nothing against <laughs> you. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was hoping to get to meet Beyonce because why wouldn't I? But, yeah. You know, she wasn't there. Yeah. Um, you come out naked in your Tyvek suit for Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch in tents in the Tyvek. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's, just, it's, it's really a string of creepy settings like that where you know you're the guy that's probably statistically the safest in the room. Right. But, you know, like, 
what do I know if I'm going to be there one day and some rival freaking jewelry factory comes up and robs the place at gunpoint? Like, you know, they're going to... That happens? That does happen all the freaking time. All those crimes that you hear about on the news that, you know, police responded to, like, you know, a shootout in Brooklyn, it's most likely involving jewelry Really? So that shootout yeah. is usually gold or drugs? Now, will they... Will the actual, um, uh, like, Jewish people running the thing be the one shooting, or they hire outside? They outsource their... their so criminal. I did mention before that the Jews have a couple mafias. Yes. Um, uh, Jews also make up like 90% of Jews are also gun owners and like pro second amendment friendly in Israel. Like, you go to a movie theater and a daycare with a gun just cause life. Right. Um, so, you know, Jews are very mindseted to like, no one's going to help us. we got to help ourselves. So that means usually if someone's going to shoot at us, we're going to shoot back. Right. Um, I've never been involved in any sort of like violence, like in the course of that work, which is kind of why. I wanted to keep it that way and kind of get out of it, you know, because right. I noticed I was being trusted more, which means right. if, if, you know, someone nice trusts me, then someone not nice is going to know that I'm important. It's like, I don't want to be important. I just want to come in, make a chain, go home, get paid. Like, that's no. it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Jay-Z, did he travel with an entourage or was it just Jay-Z? He had like bodyguards with him and shit. Really? Yeah. Were yeah. they being anti-Semitic too? <laughs> I don't think so. They're not paid to be anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah, they're paid to shoot me if I try and hurt them. Yeah. yeah. Now, why do rappers and jewelers usually have beef at some point? Oh, dude. I see um, a lot of articles saying they're suing each other, they're fighting. So w one of the things as a scam in the jewelry industry is sometimes we'll take shit to repair, like put a stone back in. We'll take out all the real diamonds and put in fake ones. And, oh. right. and so, you know, that, yeah, that, that, my, my father yeah. told me, my father told me that when I was a little kid, he's yeah. like, never give them your jewelry. Yeah. Like, like for a yeah. clean or anything, never do that. Yep. They could switch it out. Exactly. And they do. That happens. Because like you're not going to know if I give you back a ring, you know, with a diamond, that's like three grades lower. You're not going to, it's, it's diamond you know it's still a real diamond it'll go work in a tester but um you know a lot of times though you know the lab created diamonds nowadays are very good like they beat some testers so you'll see a lot of jewelers take out authentic ones replace them and you know i'd be pissed too if you stole like 50 grand worth of diamonds from my piece you know it's like yeah and that happens all the that, time um wow. how, thing, is there a way to prevent it from happening don't go to a jeweler or go to one that you trust or become a jeweler that's what the only way wow. yeah Right. It's in every industry on earth in human history, it, it, there's always an inside culture that they're going to benefit no matter what. Right. Outside of the lines, cutting corners. Right. It's just human nature. Human nature. Exactly. Is my pinky ring here, is that nice? Or is that a piece of <laughs> shit? Is that a signet ring? <laughs> don't. <laughs> hold on. I just, I just want to let you know. Just don't watch. Keep the camera on and make yeah. sure he doesn't steal it. Good. That, that's only half of my family tree. Yeah, that's a standard signet ring. I mean. What do you think? You want me to be honest? Yeah. Estimated value. Here, talk to Mike. Yeah. Estimated value, I'd say it weighs between 15 and 20 grams. This is what carat gold is it? 14. I don't 18. know. I got it as a gift. What do we think? Cheap piece of shit. I mean, because, you know, we oh, just want to be honest 14K. on the show. 14K. So you're looking at like 50 bucks a gram for 14 carat gold times two. What do we think? Like. Twelve hundred bucks if you bought it at a jewelry store. This is twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, fourteen <laughs> karat gold. No wonder why my kid can't go to camp this year. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, uh, so <laughs> the other thing is, a lot of people will make fake gold jewelry and we'll just stamp it fourteen karat. We'll plate like a really thick layer of like pure gold plating. It'll test, you know, with acid and stuff like that to be authentic, but it's really not. Uh, tungsten. We hollow out gold bars. And tungsten is the exact same density as pure gold. So we'll fill the hollow gold bar, which is worth like $100,000, with like all tungsten. Leave like, you know, 3000 bucks of gold there. And that's a big thing to actually infiltrate. <laughs> so a it's just of insane profit. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's also insane violence. You know, right. a lot of this gold comes from like Colombia, where, you know, we, we buy it from like cocaine cartels and stuff. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's like, crazy, you know, dude. dude the, uh -huh. the cartel. Everyone thinks the cartels are just cocaine, but they're not, dude. They're no, cocaine. They're, they're not. gold. They're avocados. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that's true. There, yeah. There's so much gold, you know, down in South America that it's, you know, uh, places like in Venezuela where the currency collapsed because communism. Yeah, they buying gold now. You know, you're gonna buy a freaking empanada. You're gonna pay in like you know half a gram of gold. Right. So you know, and all wow. that gold. So who do you trust? I love empanadas. You don't. Yeah, trust I was gonna anyone. say. Yeah. Is, is there any reason to pay like ex, like to pay big money for jewelry if half of it can just if the fake stuff looks just like the real stuff like should i never be paying That's thousands funny, of dollars yeah. for it 
So there's been a recent trend of this costume jewelry, fake jewelry, like coming out on Facebook. You know, it's mm-hmm. like pennies on the dollar for the same look. And I think people are realizing that jewelry, even a legit jewelry business, still sells at such a markup. You're not getting anything for your money. If you want to invest, buy gold bars. Keep them at home. Don't buy a, a you know gold chain. Right. Um, so it, it's, for example, if I have $20,000 worth of gold, I can turn that into a $150,000 chain. Right. And I can just tell people it's labor. You know, yeah, it's hard. You make it by hand. But, you know, if we get in a rhythm, we can make, you know, it's six to ten of these a day. It's it's really not that hard that, that we charge people for. So how much is this? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to start charging for this. <laughs> 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 What's that? Talking to Mike. Talking to Mike. 35 to 40 grams. Okay. This is a Miami Cuban length. Did you buy this off a guy named Shai Davidoff by any chance? Shai, I mean, is that, did she, did she get bamboozled or? He, he, uh, Italian gold. So that's the biggest thing that you want to look for. Italian gold is just a sales gimmick. So that's, that's bullshit. The Italian gold. Yeah. I mean, it, it's probably gold from Italy. Um, I'd probably value this at 2,500. This is 2,500. Yeah. That's what I'd value that. So that's, right. So uh, right now I'm on my hand. I got, I got 30. I'm about, I'm about 3,300 yeah, bucks. You sell it to a crackhead. You got five grand. You sell it to a pawn shop. You got 2,500 bucks. Total. One more. One more. All right, let's go. Here we go. Last free one. This is the one this, good. Well, I only have three pieces. Jasmine, oh, so far, go. Jasmine's done pretty good. Jasmine's done pretty good. Now, this is the one I bought myself. Let's see. All right, so. I don't know. This Where is, is it? hollow. This is don't something that me. I would make by hand. Okay. Uh, it's very dull, and it looks like on your clasp. So, gold jewelry, no matter what carrot it is, we always plate it in pure gold just to give it a better color. It's, it's more presentable that way. So, sometimes people think they have fake shit because that nicer plating wears off. When you get down to the 14 karat gold, you mix a lot of silver in it, so it kind of looks white. Um, I'd also say this is about 30 grams, maybe a little less, maybe 25. Uh, solid, so not machine made. I like when you're measuring and you get Rain Man. You get like at- <laughs> autistic. <laughs> get autistic like that. My, my juice senses are tingling. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably value this at anywhere from 1800 to 2500 Really? Yeah. Nice. 35 bucks on Amazon. Right? <laughs> or free if you have a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so, th- but it is, it, so, so wait, how do I buy a gold bar? Uh, do I buy that from a jeweler? Or do I have to buy that so, from the government? Yeah, you can also buy it from the government. You can also sell gold at any U.S. bank, by the way. Any bank in the United States will buy gold. It's still considered legal tender now. Huh. Um, if you want to buy investment gold, which is what we call it, you'll go to a place like the Diamond District. Now, if you don't know somebody who works in the industry, they're not going to let you in. Uh, you know, if you wave around a half million dollars in cash, yeah, they'll let you in. But if you're just trying to buy like, you know, two or three ounces of gold, you know, they deal with that and, and it's their pennies. Um, so if you know a guy like me, I'll middleman something for you. I'll charge you 10% of what you're buying. That's that's what I keep for setting up the deal. Your 90% buys whatever the gold is on that day. Uh, and the reason why you want to buy gold like that is because you're paying just like a stock. You're paying for the price at market. It changes every day. It will 100% go up in 20. It always goes up the price of gold. Well, yes and no during the pandemic it went up to the highest it's ever been just over two grand an ounce <clears throat> when i was like younger like in high school i remember gold being like you know six seven hundred bucks an ounce so everyone who bought gold then you know they more than doubled their money uh but gold hits that high where that bubble pops now it's going to start shooting down on top of that people are running out of their unemployment bonus money so they're not buying jewelry with it anymore right uh so the jewelry industry as like a whole is suffering now plus you got this potential world war three going on that doesn't do good things but gold will become more valuable if the world gets to such a shitty state where money just isn't worth anything anymore so right. people will go back to bartering and gold's been money for like ten thousand years would you say buy would you say now's the time to buy gold oh fuck i don't think i'm qualified to give that advice well, but just, yeah just, you know what yeah can i think any time's the time to buy gold because no matter if it goes up or down in value it'll always be money your money is worth something now but one day it might not be gold will never not be worth anything Right. So, so it, should I? Safe. And then when I but when I have the gold bar, keep it in the house. Where do I keep it? Yeah, do that and don't tell anyone about it. Seriously. Yeah. Like seriously. Just some, like yeah. have just have gold yeah. somewhere. A lot of people like you know putting stuff in safety deposit boxes, but those get robbed all the time. You'll get the money value, but that defeats the purpose of buying something that's not money. Right. You know. So it's best to keep it in your house. Don't tell anyone about it. Don't don't tell your wife about it. Don't tell oh, your no. kids. You know. <laughs> oh just no, dude. Keep it as long as, as long as the gold bar can't send direct messages, she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> And if, if someone does try and rob you of it, you can beat him over the head with it. It's still a bar of gold. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, definitely yeah. buy gold now. now. Do, do wow, the, dude. Do the gold people believe in Bitcoin? 
Oh, when you shit. say the gold people, do you mean the Jews? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that that's kind of a charged question because I actually took part in some uh, Dogecoin trading last year. Whoa. So I was able to jump in on the advice of a close contact in the gold industry. He's like, yo, buy right now. I put in $150. No bullshit. Uh, last April, I pulled out six grand. Wow. So, and uh, what people do is, you know, they buy these cryptocurrencies to buy gold because a lot of online jewelry retailers accept cryptocurrency payments. Really? And that's how you launder money. Once you buy gold, it's untraceable. Even more so if you melt it down and turn it into a hummingbird, you know, like you're right. never going to know where it comes from. You could say it's a hundred years old. All gold is billions of years old. So they test it. There's no way to prove it was you know, where and when it was. But so, so like, but you can, like, if I want to go and say, say I didn't want to go through you, say I just, I was like, I'm going to go to a jewelry store and buy a gold bar. I could be sold a fake gold bar. Yes, you for can. For sure. Yeah. That, uh, a yeah. lot of, uh, it'll pass all the tests. It'll pass most tests. Uh, the way you test for a fake gold bar filled with tungsten is you actually put it in an x-ray machine. Uh, you can also put it in what's called an x-ray spectrometer. So what it does is it's spectrograph. It bounces uh, x-rays off of the gold and, you know, tungsten comes back with a different wavelength. So you can see through the whole bar that way and tell if it's real. That service alone, you pay about $300 for. So you're not going to do that for a chain. You'll do that if you're buying like, you know, a hundred ounce federal bar, like that's a quarter million dollars. Um, I'd say the chances of you getting fake gold at like a reputable place, maybe about less than 5%. Chance of you getting fake gold at a jewelry store, about fifty percent, really? Wow. Yeah, and any jewelry store, not just the diamond district. Any like, jewelry, jewelry store. store I go to uh, on yeah. the corner, they'll yeah. s- they got f- they're selling fake shit left and yeah. right all the time. A lot of time, they also do silver and just plate it in gold because right. they, they, you know, precious metal. Um, so jewelry stores are very dangerous, uh, and you know the trade off is you're you're pretty much guaranteed to be treated well in the diamond district, but they won't sell to you unless they know you. Got you're it. just some Joe Smo coming from the, tr- the street, be like you know. Why do you want to buy 50 ounces of gold from me? Who the fuck are you? You know, like, who do you work for? No. Right. So, yeah, you, you got to know somebody. It's like every good thing in life. Magic Spoon. I've been eating it. I love it. I'm Chrissy Magic Spoon. I want to be an endorsement deal with Magic Spoon. I am Magic Spoon. You know, It's the keto-friendly cereal that's packed with protein that everyone in my family eats. I have boxes and boxes and boxes of it. It's only 140, calorie, 140 calories a serving, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four net carbs in each serving. They got peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, maple waffle. My favorite's cocoa, and I love the fruity I love the fruity pebble-flavored one. And Frosted is awesome, too. If you go to magicspoon.com slash chaos right now and put in the promo code chaos, you're going to save $5 off your first order. Go get a custom bundle of cereal. That's the best one. I love the custom bundles. And remember, if uh, uh, um, you're going to get 100% happiness guaranteed, it's it's literally, I eat it and it tastes like the, the cereal that I used to eat when I was a kid, but it's guilt-free. I'm getting stronger and bigger from Magic Spoon. I love it. I'm jacked now of Magic Spoon. You get, you're going to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash chaos and use the code chaos to save $5 off. Thank you so much, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Keeps, baby. You know it. Male pattern baldness. Two out of three men are going to experience it by the time they're 35. That's 50 million men in the U.S. will suffer from male pattern baldness, and there are only two FDA-approved medications that prevent hair loss. Keeps offers them both. You get 24-7 care and support. You get a convenient virtual doctor consultation and medications delivered straight to your door every three months, and it's low cost. Only 10 buckaroos a month, and Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. Okay. Okay, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash chaos to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash chaos. Get your first month free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash chaos. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less. And remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast, Baldy. Who would you think would win in a fist fight? Adam Salem from Uncut Jams or Jacob the Jeweler? Neither, me. You think you'd beat the shit? No, I seriously, honestly, yeah. dude, you literally, I want you to be my jeweler just because, Word, yeah, go. just because like, I trust you. Like I trust, <laughs> I, I trust, I trust your energy. I trust your vibe. I oh, know yeah, you can man. beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> like you're in my safety deposit box. I want to yeah. stick my gold bars up your ass. Oh shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll be your spirit animal. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. But have you ever met Jacob the jeweler? Cause I feel like he's the most famous one. Cause he's the one that's rapped about. So I've not met Jacob the jeweler, but I know Benny the jeweler. Who's now? Who's Benny the jeweler? Uh, another dude that considers himself Instagram famous. He's actually the best friend of the guy I used to work for. And he's this real sleazy guy. He is the guy that'll 
buy a chain that came out sub quality from us it might come out 12 instead of 14 carat he'll sell it as 14 carat to his customers without Got giving it. a single shit so benny the jeweler right here he also yeah. he know see all these guys like a guy yep. like, oh he's with kanye which by the way i just saw the second episode of the kanye west documentary it's so i'm halfway through it gave him a it's just the kanye west thing is it's just insane if you haven't seen it on netflix it's it's so dope but now he looks like benny the jeweler up there he looks like an italian guy but this is jewish mafia type of stuff yeah i like that yeah he's involved in the jewish mob most likely or if you're a jeweler, no. you're in the Jewish mob. No, no, he, he. Well, actually, you know what? Probably, yeah. Yeah, because right. Jews all around the world have like a brotherhood. You know, if I'm lost in Zimbabwe and I find a Jewish family, it'll probably take me. No, in like, and give like me it's what it is with Italians. Like Italians, if, if you own a construction yeah. company, you own like a, a garbage claim company. It's yeah. a mafia connected industry. <laughs> Cosa and, Nostra. Cosa yeah. Nostra is the same thing. Is the same thing with. With Jewish, uh, with Jewish people in the well, jewelry industry, it's, it's more like, you know, cultural. It's similar. We don't have our own people coming up, knocking on our door, demanding protection money. But, right. you know, we do have people saying, hey, if you want to make a little extra money, like come with me and deliver a product to this guy I know, and then that's your end. Um, so, like, you can get, you can be Benny the Jeweler or Jacob the Jeweler level status if you got enough famous clientele. It's all Instagram. Oh, 100%. Like, he's not getting anything that you can't get. He's not a real jeweler. He doesn't make, I used to make his jewelry with my partner. So, he's just the face. Yeah. Oh, he's a he, All he does is retail. <laughs> all he does is retail. And you know what's funny? I've literally delivered pieces to him where he's given it to, like, some bullshit mumble rapper five minutes later. Like, yeah, bro, I made this piece just for you. And I'm looking at him like, Dickhead, like I made that. Piece. I fucking like, made it. Well, and yeah. I like, I like that you don't care. You'll name names because you will beat the shit out of anybody that nah, disagrees you know, with you. You're, I'm, you're I'm, a Krav Maga master, dude. You're an Israeli. You're like fucking Kung Fu Panda, but as a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> now there's other like neighborhoods in New York, like you know, like, go to Harlem or Chinatown or the Diamond District. Yeah. Like, what would you suggest? Like, you know, is the best place to go? Or like, did you have beef with any other jewelers? Oh yeah, we've had beef with Benny the jeweler before. Oh, yeah, he, he used to, you know, we, when it comes to these inside deals, we we you know make jewelry and we give them you know like f friends and family rates on labor, which is what you're paying over the gold, and you know we'll make a. Ten thousand dollar chain for him just to you know make ten percent off that for the labor you know we'll yeah. cut him those deals. The problem comes when that motherfucker gets on the phone with us. You know, I want five chains by five o'clock today. Like no, you can suck my whole dick for that. Like you can't wow. do that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now let me ask you this. This is a question from the Patreon. What race would you say buys the most jewelry? Black. Yeah. And Asian. Just as whoa. Much as oh, Asian. Yes. Sleeper pick. Yeah. Okay. It's like having a guy with a small pow. Oh my god. Am I gonna get a? <laughs> No, no, no. Just zoom in on his face. <laughs> right? Uh, <Yeah. laughs> wow. So, government. so black and Asian people are the are the biggest jewelry customers. Yep. Yeah. Jews hate it. We just sell it. Just hate it, yep. sell it. Yeah. Now, who's this guy? Who's any of the jewelry he's on? He's with us. Oh, Soldier Boy. This is Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, Boy who's, who's fully vaccinated and also has the booster. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now, what was like, the, did any of the guys ever tell you like stories from the 80s and 90s? Like, was there any crazy stories you heard? I mean, the guy I worked with is, you know, not that much older than me. So he was like a kid in the 80s and 90s. Um, I know his dad got into it with like, you know, Italians and, and uh, not a Portuguese. So if, yeah, no, Portuguese people, right? That's where Spain is. I'm thinking of Brazil when I say Portuguese. Um, yeah. So, you know, he would buy a lot of gold from these countries. I'm talking about like in the 80s when gold was like fourth grand a kilo you know like he'd be bringing in like 100 200 kilos into it really shit. yeah and in fact you brought up uncut gems you know you stuck it in a fish we used to call it uncut jams <laughs> yeah jams yeah there we go <laughs> so you know <clears throat> that fish thing is kind of an inside joke to jewelers because we do pack our shit in food a lot um wow gold doesn't smell so it's not like you're trying to hide like you know weed um and gold is set it never smells yeah and uh wow, it's fish <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and fish, you know, it, it it it's packed with ice. So when you put it through an X ray, they just assume the gold's ice. Um, unless it has diamonds in it, then oh. it really would be ice. But you know, in that yeah. case, it's it's it really is like so that. So it's yeah. a whole like like so if you could like if uh pimp if you could if you could put up say uh go go down to Soldier Boy again if you can pimpy okay. the one that we were just on because it just just like an estimate like or, or whatever well, you know uh, this one right here yeah pick one like how. This one right here. Like, how much money is is um is is she wearing? Is Chinese kitty wearing? Without 
weighing it and without like measuring diamond purities and classes, I'd probably say the pendant alone would be about seventy thousand dollars. Wow. Um, because it's a cluster setup. So you got big diamonds making up the letters. Those are actually just diamond chips. That's why they're like shaped like, you know, rectangles. Okay. Uh, and then you got small cluster diamonds setting up in the middle and on the borders. So that piece is a piece that like it's good if you want to show off because it looks like a shit ton of ice, but it's actually really easy and cheap to make compared to the stuff that's really expensive. So seventy grand but as soon as she walks out the door it's devalued um that's not going to be 70 grand a year from now no it'll probably be more because one of the biggest things that goes with buying jewelry is insurance fraud so there's jewelry insurance uh what we would do is if you buy a ten thousand dollar piece to muscle say give us 20 grand for it we'll insure it for 20 grand it's insured against all laws you lose it it gets stolen you're going to check for 20 grand and uh you know you'll get to keep your piece Right, and then wow. we got paid double for our work, so everyone benefits. So that and that's, yeah. but that's a fraud, obviously. It, it's one hundred percent fraud. But how do you? Pr- how can somebody prove it? I mean, if you don't, if you, you can't, you can't. I, yeah. I, I have the piece still, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, don't wear it out. Don't wear it out. You probably should be better off taking some of that money you made and melt it down into something else. Then you can't find out what it used to be. Uh, uh, if you do claim, you know, a payout on something that you say you lost, and you're caught by like the company of the, in- the insurance company wearing it later. Yeah. You're going to go to jail and you're going to have to pay back restitution. But you know, if, if you're stupid enough to be that kind of criminal, you're not stupid enough to get caught doing it. And then, right. you know, it's, it's all trust. You know, we don't sit anyone out because wow, dude, that's like where all the money the is dude. That's why yeah. I should be putting my daughter's retirement funds and melting down gold jewelry. 100%. I got from insurance fraud. It's not Charles Schwab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, look at uh, Bernie Madoff. He, he was part of a legit operation. Was Bernie Madoff M- melting down gold? Probably. I don't know. Right. I mean, I was in high school and the guy went to prison. So, But was he involved in the jewelry business at all? Did everyone know I Madoff? I have no clue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, I, do, now, after working in the jewelry business, do you believe in the Illuminati more? I believe in the Illuminati because I'm Jewish, not because I'm a jeweler. <laughs> like, right. uh, I believe in secret societies because there's some perceptions that the nation of you know, Judea is a secret society in ways. Um, we're the smallest population of people in the world. So, you know, we got that going for us. Yeah. Um, plus we control all the media in the world. So that's, pretty that's true. <laughs> I mean, but look, but look seriously, like, like you're saying about secret societies and who knows who doesn't know. But I mean, look, if, if you told, I bet you there's people that if they listen to this podcast and we told them the exact address of where that place was in Williamsburg, they've been living across the street from it for 20 years. They don't yeah. know it exists. Yeah, So it's exactly. like, if that can exist, like a full <clears throat> labyrinth of yeah. stuff, why can't some secret society that's abstract I mean, exist? I think by definition, that literally is a secret society. That 100% no one knows about is. it unless you're in it, you yeah. know, and people will get violent to keep the wrong people out of it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's as Illuminati as it gets, I think. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever get followed or anything? Uh, not that I've, well, oh, that's creepy. No, not that I know of. Okay. Probably. Do you ever but, worry about your life? Like, or what if violence could erupt in your world and your, while you're working or anything? I've been face to face with terrorists when I lived in Israel. We've arrested them. So, I mean. You arrested a terrorist? We've many terrorists. I mean, now, Israeli definition of a terrorist is very broad. You know, anyone that goes and shoots up a school or throws a bomb somewhere, or digs a tunnel to hide weapons is a terrorist. Yeah. So, you know, that's all the IDF does. We're not going to Iraq and fucking their shit up we're right. you know protecting our home shit. terrorists exactly yeah homegrown ter- exactly. homegrown terrorists yeah yeah well um, that's what i feel like even with this russia ukraine stuff like yeah we watch the news and all that but it's like what do i care vladimir putin has nothing to do with me like the real terrorist is nancy pelosi <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and now, now we know my political leanings. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, most I, of Israel, but no, true. A yeah. lot of Jewish people are where well, they love Donny T. Um, now I'm not saying all. Uh, yeah. a high percentage of 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 a lot of all the Jewish people I knew, I would say they love Donny T. I should take that because they were Republican more than Democrats. So they named an entire neighborhood in Israel after Trump. It's called Ramat Trump in English. That means Trump Heights, like Washington Heights. I and have to buy property there. Brand, <laughs> and, and it's like elite one percent property. You're getting a villa. Like, you know, the cool Wait thing a minute, is... There's a neighborhood named after Donnie T yeah, in Israel. Yeah, Trump. And it has his freaking face on a plaque and everything. Like, because, you know, he was looked at as pretty benevolent towards Isra- Israeli, like, foreign policy. Can I go on my return there? How you went on your return to Israel? And you said it's Jewish. Because if it's it. by Jewish birthright, then you yeah. get to go back to is, Israel. Is, is, is your is mom it by Jewish? Me, is it me by, uh-huh. by, by voter right? I get to go back to L-O-L. Trump land? No, but now <laughs> we can get married and you can go because of that, right? Because, yeah. you know, 2022. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he has a whole neighborhood out there. Wow. Did you ever yeah. go there? 
No, it wasn't built when I was living there. Yeah. I moved away in like late 2017. They what, just finished it like 2019. Are most of the jewelry people, would you say, if you had to pick a majority Republican more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? As Big fuck. Time. Yeah, Republican yeah. as fuck. Yeah, Israel's Republican as fuck, and there's not even a Republican party there. No. So, yeah. Well, Donnie T probably went. I bet you Donnie T was in some, knows some of these jewelry guys. Big time. Uh, I mean, I, I've never known him as being big in jewelry. I'm pretty sure his daughter has. His I daughter, actually, I'm sure yeah. the Trump family knows some of the people you know. Yeah, I'm 100%. pretty sure by the six degrees of separation, I know the ex-president and Now, how much could we melt this down for? Uh, give me 50 bucks for it right now. <laughs> 50 bucks, and that's it? And then I don't get anything back in return? Um, all right, so you want to you want to I want to melt it down. I mean, there were gifts, you know. Yeah. Well, like you want to pay but someone to melt it down, or you want to sell the I'm gold to somebody? I'm just going to need a place to live soon. Oh, well, I mean. So I need to melt it <laughs> Like you know, your landlord can take it to the bank. Uh, no, you know, if you ever actually want to melt down your jewelry, there's places in the district that do it. You throw them like 20, 30 bucks and, you know, they'll do it for you. Um, but then what do I do with the melted down gold? Like then what do we do? Stick it up your ass. Like just whatever. <laughs> That's been floated around before already, Then I just right? have pure gold. Yeah, I mean, you might as well melt it into like a more convenient shape for that, if anything. But yeah. <laughs> gold i just have gold then i just yeah. have some gold that's valuable uh yeah and if the entire world ends because of world war three then you'd have money because if you have a million dollars in fiat currency in a bank and the world ends that's worth nothing right and you won't even be able to get it anyway so, right yeah the gold well you think it'll go if world war three truly does happen we'll go back to gold <laughs> not only are we going back to gold as like a currency but every day like i'll probably be buying my weed in gold that's how common it will be. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's the only safe thing. And it lasts forever. It's not like it's like honey. It never expires. Yeah, that, that's the thing, too. It's like yeah. all our money in the banks, it's just a number on a screen. It's not real. Yeah. And it it's just, not backed even by gold, they say no, anymore, not again, right? Not since the 30s. They nope. say that that is actually yeah. gone. Yeah. They, they even say that the reason why Germany to this day is even the power that it is. He's even number one in the EU is because of the gold they still have from World War II. All the gold yep. that they stole yeah. from the Jewish people or from the European nations yeah. they took over, they still have that gold, so that's why they're powerful. So they know where it is, and every couple of years, you know, a German mining company be like, look, we randomly found a, a <laughs> mine, and it's so convenient it's already in bars. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You're like, like oh, you know, yeah. This one says Czechoslovakia yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, but uh, yeah, no, that, that's, you know, even though we don't have the gold standard as a currency driver anymore, countries still value their currency based on how much gold they have in reserve. So, you know, Fort Knox in I think Tennessee, right? Or Kentucky, whatever. All the nation's gold is still there and, and other nations gold is still there. That's what, that's the real reason why people don't mess with the United States. Right. We have their money. Right. It's not the Swiss. The Swiss yeah. aren't in the game anymore. Yeah. You can't even open up a Swiss bank account and expect yeah. protection. Yeah, the United now. States have all... So if, Ru if, if Russia wants to nuke us, we have their money. Yeah, and they'll pre-melt the gold, so it'll probably be easier to get it. Right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. So is there is there a finite amount of gold in the world, or you could just keep making gold? Um, There's a finite amount of gold on Earth, but there's thought to be a shit ton of gold like in the universe. That, that um, might be a reason they're trying to go to Mars, true, the, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they just found an entire... Uh, it, it says here that the gold arrived on Earth from space, yeah, they believe. There you go. From that. space. Is gold there? arrived on Earth from space. It doesn't naturally occur on Earth. Um, so gold actually forms in stars. It's a heavy metal. All heavy metals form in stars. Uh, when a star blows up... When a star is born? Shot all, yeah, or, or when it dies. Mostly when it dies. Oh, when a star uh, dies. Yeah, exactly. R.I.P. Lady Gaga. It pretty much just jizzes all over the entire galactic neighborhood. Yes, and then, nice. You know, <laughs> it Weinsteins it. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're small little creatures, so a 10-mile-wide you know, asteroid filled with gold, that's nothing to a star. It's like all the world's gold to us. Right. You know, a good 4% of your gold is actually from the Roman Empire. Like, they're 4% of what's in your jewelry right now has traces back to the Roman Empire. Really? Yeah. Um, wow holy smoke yeah. why just because it just keeps Reasons. getting handed down and yeah all gold is recycled i, I can take queen elizabeth's crown now it's like 300 years old and i can make a modern miami cuban link out of it no one's gonna know it used to be her crown yeah no yeah. wow that's insane dude yeah. so so we might be going back to gold awesome oh. great for me like <laughs> How Please. much gold have humans found on Earth? It's estimated that to date, humans have mined almost 180,000 tons yep. of gold. That's not a lot. Wow. A cargo ship weighs more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's all the gold we've had. Ever. Because it just keeps getting recycled. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, my God, yep. dude. It's in cars. It's in that TV. It's in the camera. Gold's everywhere. 
Pure gold has a melting point of 1,064.43, yep. which is what yeah. my fever was when I had COVID. And if you wet your finger, you Never can had dip it. your finger in molten gold too and be just fine. If I dip my finger in yep. molten gold? I think it's called the lead in frost effect. So you, you wet your finger, you put it in a molten metal. It's so hot, it makes like a shield of steam around your finger. So you can dip it in and come out. Right? Oh. Burn, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dude, gold is like fascinating. I never knew anything yeah. like this about gold. Yeah, it's pretty special stuff. A lot of people die over it. <laughs> somebody, the, do, somebody died over during the course of this podcast. Somebody got killed over gold. Oh, hell yeah. Probably like 10 people. Probably your yeah. partner. At once. Yeah. <laughs> I, Imagine I mean, you go back to your office, there was just a massacre. Now, now and you got con- saved by Chrissy Chaos. <laughs> right. Oh, shit. I should have taken out an insurance policy on it. That was. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm all fair that I'm going to buy gold bars from you. Go for it, man. I'll charge you 10% commission. That's the best rate you'll get. Dude, that's what I'm used to getting charged 10% commission. That's what agents charge. Yeah. That's okay, what cool. agents in the agent, entertainment yeah. industry charge. So 10%, interesting. That's because because I always wondered, where do they come up with the number 10% for agents, <laughs> managers, and industry? The gold gold yeah. guys uh, do 10% too. Want to know the reason why? Yeah. It's hard to say no to 10%. It's a nice round number. It's Even you think of it, you still get 90%. So it's like, that's fair. Right, you know, and if it's a big amount, that ten percent is pretty nice for us too. So yeah, we just hope you don't think about it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I know that's the thing. I I, know, I used to not think about it a lot, but now when the money starts to come in more, yeah. and you're like, I have to give ten percent of this. Yeah, like to, to a guy that made a phone call. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because because the numbers, like even like you know, this year, like when they would say, or over the last whatever a couple of years, you know, all the news would talk about, oh, all the people would go crazy. Oh, only one percent of the population died from COVID. It's like that's still like <laughs> millions and millions yeah. and millions of people. Like, what if you're that one percent? Like, yeah. you know, that sucks for you. Like. Yeah. I am the one percent. That's why I live in the Trump neighborhood in Israel. Hell yeah, Ramat Trump. What's it called again? Ramat Trump. Ramat Trump. Yeah. Can you? Uh, would you be able to say um, to come see me on the road and yeah, my website, which is christycomedy.com, Would you be able to say that in Hebrew to the camera? Holy shit! I'm sorry. What do you want me to say again? Just or, say or just, Mandarin too. Just or, I'm sorry in Mandarin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How about say in Mandarin? Just say go see Chris Stefano. He's well, go say say this in Mandarin. Say go Chu Khan Christy Stefano. What's the website? ChrisDComedy.com. Zai, ChrisDComedy.com. There you go, yeah. dude. Let Where can people it. find you? Uh, you can probably find me through my sports page on Instagram. I'm the head of an airsoft team. Okay. Uh, call sign underscore Shulai. S-H-U-L-E-I. Okay. It means fox in Hebrew because I'm cool. Yes. Um, you are cool. <laughs> yeah. And all my stuff's there. I, I just broke 3,500 followers. So Hell yeah, to, dude. Uh, up there. 3,500. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and can people can people message you if they want to buy gold through you or you're not doing that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit me up. I'll, I'll respond. Seriously. Yeah, I trust real. this guy. So he's he's got he's got the code sign. He's a Chrissy yep. code sign. I trust <laughs> this guy. I'm going to actually, uh, before he leaves my house, I'm going to actually, I'm going to dump out uh, some of the uh, college funds I have for the kids there. And uh, we're going to get him some gold <laughs> bars because it feels feels like i haven't checked the news in in, a, in an hour but it feels like we're on what i would call the brink we're on the brink <laughs> of it all so we're gonna probably need some gold yeah. pretty soon and, and you're my guy of it. Yeah, dude, you're I my gotcha. gold guy hell yeah world war three man let's go i love it dude <laughs> i appreciate it yeah yeah got it. dude everybody else that jacob the jeweler all wearing nine thousand dollars piece of jewelry fuck that dude <laughs> I, my guy's wearing old navy and he drives a prius <laughs> A Mitsubishi, but close enough. <laughs> yeah. Still Chris, Japanese. ChrisDComedy.com, folks. Thanks for listening. As always, March 4th, Royal Oak, Detroit. Tickets almost sold out. March 5th, we added a third show at the Gramercy Theater in New York City. The 7 and 9 o'clock shows are sold out. That is my uh, 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 special taping, comedy special taping. Midnight show, Midnight Chaos. Going to have a bunch of surprise guests. Then we got March 18th and 19th in Seattle and Portland. March 25th, Las Vegas, Nevada. And then ChristyComedy.com for all my dates in April and May. We're coming to you, baby. We love you. The YouTube special is going to come out. It's going to be great. Shimmy Show in Vega is my new BFF. He's going to be wherever I am. You're going to see him, baby. He's my gold chain, Shimmy Sean. <laughs> Shim Vega, follow him. Uh, DM him where he told you to DM him. He's going to get the gold bars. Homeless Pimpy, Venetia, the woman in the back. Yes. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? March 4th, I will be in Detroit at the Royal Oak Music Theater. March 5th, Gramercy Theater, New York City, special taping, two shows. Be there, we're doing the Spetchy Weshy. March 11th, co headlining with Sal Volcano in Nashville, Tennessee. March 18th, Seattle, Washington. March 19th, Portland, Oregon. March 25th, Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. April 8th, Indianapolis. April 9th, Denver, Colorado. And April 29th, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where Jesus Christ was born. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wiki. Thank you.